Okay, welcome once again. I believe it's the correct time that we shall start today's webinar uh, presented by Rock Science. Uh, practical aspects of numerical modeling for rock masses using rock science software. Uh, such a promising header uh, supported by Macedonian Association for Geotechnics. I would like to welcome our guests today on behalf of Rock Science in Geodesic. Uh, Professor Milorad Jovanovski will join us today along with Professor Igor Pashevsky, two dis distinguished academicians from Macedonia. And I will try to help you with a brief introduction and hand over the stage to our distinguished guests today. A little bit about Geodestec before we start and Rock Science. Uh, we are the official reseller of Rock Science products since 2011. We're specialized in geotechnical investigations and testing, geotechnical design, geotechnical structural instrumentation, as well as research and development activities, along with uh, many of the uh, co-hosted activities we have completed with Rock Science. Little amount of uh, announcements. Uh, we will be holding a face-to-face -face course between the dates of 27 to 29th April uh, in Belgrade, hopefully, and uh, where we have began uh, taking registrations. This will be a three full day face to face course. Uh, if you want further instructions and guidance, you may write us and consult us, as well as referring to the Rock Science website. Besides this, we will be holding a upcoming webinar on application of advanced material models and modeling embankments and deep excavations using Rock Science software. This will be conducted in English and will be online. And we have also recently announced a three-day Turkish course in Ankara, focusing on 2D and 3D software tools for geomechanical modeling of open pits and underground mining. You may follow the details from Rock Science website. Uh, last but not the least, we wish to meet in person as soon as possible, hopefully uh, during uh, the symposium of uh, Macedonian Association for Geotechnics. I believe Professor Jovanovski and Professor Pashevsky will have a lot to say about this. About rock science, as you know, rock science is a world reader, leader in developing 2D and 3D software for civil mining and geotechnical engineers. Here's a glimpse of uh, Rock Sciences uh, main office building located in downtown Toronto. Rock Science has a suite of software focusing on uh, slope stability, finite element analysis, 2D and 3D modeling programs which can analyze virtually any slope. So a little walk through to the tools we have. It's slide two, the 2D limited equilibrium, well-known slope stability analysis, as well as its companion slide three, which enables you to conduct 3D limited equilibrium slope stability analysis. For discontinuity controlled masses, we have an option to uh, make a basic and very fast planar wedge analysis for slopes using rock plane. Similarly, for wedge fader analysis, a switch for toppling type stability analysis, rock topple. And for conducting statistical analysis of rock falls, we have rock fall. Please note that rock fall 3, the 3D version uh, of the well-known Rockfall software is announced and it's uh, approaching uh, to be uh, used by the engineering community. Programs for excavation design. RS2, the basic and comprehensive uh, finite element analysis tool in 2D, its companion RS3 in 3D, Rock support 
it is a very useful tool for support estimation using ground reaction curves and intends to make a first order approach to tunneling design and what you may expect. Examine three, refreshed and renewed, uh, all in updated mode for 3D stress analysis for underground excavations. A very powerful tool if you also plan to use it in companion with RS3. Unwedge is for underground wedge stability analysis. Besides that, we have a suite for uh, conducting settlement and foundation analysis in general. Uh, perhaps one of the most popular software tools of rock science is the Settle Tree, which enables you to conduct settlement and consolidation analysis. RS Pile, basically, uh, very versatile tool for conducting 3D pile analysis, including detailing for uh, single piles or group piles, as well as having a feel of the cross-sectional demands associated with uh, any type of soil they are installed in. RS data, updated and fully refreshed form of rock data, which now enables tools for simulating more complex constitutive models, which are representative of soil. C pillar is for crown pillar stability analysis. So if you would like further information, if on any of our products, please consult us. So before I hand the stage to the professors, here's a very short warm up on some of the challenges we're facing in practical rank engineering. This mini section or a micro session is not intended to represent a full presentation, but just to act as a thought provoker on what we are facing basically. It does not cover all of the problems which are which we are trying to handle in uh, practical rock engineering, but just uh, as a a very short uh, thought provoker uh, for the rest of the today's very valuable and detailed presentation. So three cases which we want to present based on our consulting experience. Uh, the first one was to determine the is focusing on determining the shear strength along discontinuities. This will be addressed in detail. However, what we want to uh, emphasize here is that uh, in cases which you have failures in uh, along discontinuities, it is uh, a very lucky situation to just to go back analyze uh, using some sort of uh, uncertainty modeling or back analysis tools and come up with uh, characterizing the shear strength uh, properties along discontinuities. That will allow you a good amount of and quality data to progress with the rest of the analysis and uh, complete your design. Uh, this was taken from uh, a case study we were involved in. It includes the layout of the study area, and uh, this was an open cut uh, made in benches. So uh, we had a suite of pre-completed geotechnical investigations, but not much uh, detailed emphasis on slope design. So. The client faced some very characteristic wage failures along the sloped cuts, along two sets of discontinuity. And on the right, you can see a single set of discontinuity beginning to emerge, perhaps to be coupled with one another to be a candidate for a potential wedge failure in the future. This was not the only wedge type geometry of instability we had exposed uh, at the site and we had uh, experienced at the site. So our observations were concentrated on characterizing wedges of different orientation and sizes. Then the next step while observing 
the already failed masses was to just have a very rough feeling of the shift strength along the discontinuities and to understand what might have triggered the failure. So we went back ahead uh, and conducted a very simple 2D uh, limit equilibrium analysis uh, to be coupled with a detailed uh, wedge type analysis. I can understand that, and you can just readily understand that there are many factors affecting uh, the factor of safety, including uh, the strength of these continuities, as well as the poor pressure generation conditions and other loading conditions which may be present at the site. In order to just have a very rough understanding, engineering understanding, and approach, build an approach to a problem, uh, with a simple back analysis, including uh, modeling of some amount of uh, parameter uncertainty, which will address the variation of pore pressure conditions or strength parameters, uh, which uh, to or bring the uh, which uh, type of stability failure to the limit state condition. So we don't have a single answer for it. Uh, even uh, for a case that we have observed something in the field. So we did our back calculations and imposed some other loading conditions uh, to assess the site, then finally came up uh, with some recommendations on how to stabilize it, including solutions for re-sloping or just uh, making some other uh, rehabilitation measures. Uh, in this case, we were able to come up with something, although we did not have very detailed site data. This was not an ideal condition for us. However, the tools enabled us to build an engineering approach at first stage. Imagine you have cases which you do not have already failures, but want to analyze and characterize the shear strength along the discontinuity, that's what uh, the most critical part is pronounced. And uh, very meticulous effort should be spent on site characterization, as well as uh, augmenting it with uh, possible uh, large-scale field tests to characterize uh, the rock mass. Uh, here's another one. This is not a natural rock mass, actually. It was a rock waste fill project that we were involved in and in, included a detailed field and laboratory characterization of the natural uh, rock mass itself as well as the waste fill material to be deposited in a mining site. So we had a chance to model uncertainty as we were exposed to a good quality of data. And we did some 2D and both 3D modeling. But before doing that, the most critical part was to assess what the input parameters was to properly characterize the waste field material. So the uh, mining site who deposited uh, the units uh, did not have very good records of what the approximate in situ density uh, of and gradation uh, of the uh, waste fill was. So the first thing we proposed and executed was to uh, make a large scale density determination, then using a controlled excavation procedure in the field. Of course, a particle grading was also made. Then we proceeded with conducting large scale direct shear tests on constituted rock field material which was in accordance with roughly what we experienced in terms of uh, particle uh, composition, size composition, and density measured in the field. The first thing we developed was just the strength envelopes, which may be linear or nonlinear based on the effective stress interval that you're testing and trying to characterize. But we went ahead further to build an effective stress-dependent nonlinear constitutive model from direct shear testing 
results as well and came up with an Arduino strain model. Also applied what we had in the hand regarding the uncertainty modeling of the parameters. So at the end of the day, we had a distribution of safety factors which gave us an indication of what the actual risks in the field was regarding the stability of that 300 meter height deposit. Uh, these are just very basic screenshots from slide two and RS2. Uh, on the left, we made a 2D and 3D limited beam based slope stability assessment under various loading conditions. Then on the right, you see a representative screenshot of a um, uh, 2D finite element based uh, settlement analysis, uh, staged embankment problem uh, solved using the const advanced constitutive model parameters we developed using our through our uh, site investigation and laboratory uh, testing uh, campaign. These were, of course, repeated in uh, three dimensions, and uh, any ambiguities or comparisons were identified, if any. Another and last thought provoker on how just basic site characterization, uh, geological characterization, investigations, mapping, and uh, building an engineering geology model is very crucial to understand the real behavior before just playing out with your computer models. So we were involved in a very large scale slope instability problem. And the basic units were talus and desert, uh, tough and uh, basalts. All historical rehabilitation measures before we were involved in the project were focused on shallow treatment solutions uh, because the talus was the one to blame, uh, just uh, considering the uh, surface deformations observed at the site. Uh, the good amount of uh, deep uh, borehole based investigations were not present before we were involved, but we luckily were handed out this data very recently and identified that uh, volcanic pressure was mainly responsible for uh, triggering a creep style uh, slope instability problem which has been experiencing at the site for almost 20 years. Surface deformation data, historical documentation, detailed borehole-based geotechnical investigations, which were conducted reaching deeper depths, were also handed out to us. So another recent effort, borehole inclinometer readings, near real-time borehole piezometer data, seasonal precipitation changes so that we can correctly model the fluctuations or possible fluctuations in the pore pressure distribution, site visits, detailed mapping, all just came up and uh, were assessed in detail so that we were able to generate a model for back analyzing this behavior and providing and at least proposing a remedy for a uh, solution or for uh, slowing down the movement or completely stopping down the movement. So it was consisting of a multi-stage reinforced concrete slope rehabilitation piles uh, boosted by recommendations for continuous performance monitoring. So, uh, it's not all the software tools itself. So I think it is the right time to hand over the presentation to Professor Pashevsky for
So uh, I will only shortly introduce myself. Uh, so I work at the Faculty of Civil Engineering in Skopje at the Chair of uh, Geotechnics. And we are part of the largest university in Macedonia, the St. Cyril and uh, Methodius University. So I finished the PhD, uh, the bachelor in 2008 on geology. And after that, the master thesis and PhD uh, at the Faculty of Civil Engineering here in Skopje. Uh, I obtained the title in uh, PhD in 2015 in the field of geotechnics in the research of landslide susceptibility and hazard assessment. So uh, since I'm a part of the, let's say, of the chair uh, uh, working with the professor together, the second part of my introduction, I will skip it and I will return to the I will proceed with the presentation of uh, Professor Ivanovsky. The professor also works on the same chair of geotechnics at the Faculty of Civil Engineering. Uh, we finish at the same faculty of mining and geology in Stip on, on geology, let's say, uh, section. Uh, and after that, the professor uh, continued the education at the uh, University of Belgrade at the Faculty of Mining and Geology for the uh, master thesis and in 2001 he defended the PhD dissertation uh, here at the Faculty of Civil Engineering in the research area of rock mass classification as a working media. Uh, the professor has a rich uh, scientific work behind him and he has been involved in directly in more than 400 projects in the country and the region. These have been uh, related to the road geotechnics, engineering, engineering geological characterization of dump sites, uh, tunnels, and various slope stability problems, which are uh, very common in, in these parts of, let's say, of, uh, of the Balkans. Uh, the professor is currently uh, involved in solving slope stability problems uh, nationwide and he works primarily primarily as a consultant uh, or as a reviewer of technical documentation uh, the research interests include uh, mainly rock mask characterization rockfall and landslide characterization and modeling uh, some projects on rock improvement and stabilization stabilizations uh, part of all of this work we will see at the presentation today uh, also some risk analysis related to the stability problems and so on. Uh, the professor uh, has been uh, dean and vice dean of the faculty and is the immediate past president of the Macedonian Association of Geotechnics and was the chairman of the organizing committee of the 16th uh, Danube European Conference of Geotechnical Engineering, which was held in, in Skopje in 2018. So as a, let's say as a department, as a association for geotechnics, we're very proud of, on this event and we hope we will be able to have similar like this uh, during the this summer, the beginning of this summer. Um, it is worth to mention that the professor obtained uh, a honorary award from the uh, Austrian Society of Engineers and Architects in 2019. Uh, it's called the Great Gold Medal of Honor for exceptional scientific and practical contribution for development of engineering, geology, and geotechnics. So, without further ado, I will now give the floor to the professor, and uh, we, we, we can see the, uh, let's say, the prepared material for a case study. Uh, including many aspects of the uh, stability and the use softwares from uh, rock science for a, uh, let's say for a location here near to Skopje uh, related to a uh, access road for a, for a dam. So the professor now can take over the... Okay, from the beginning I want to express my thanks to the organizers, rock science and the uh, Geodesk Tech to give us a uh, possibility to pre to present some of the our results and to be a part of this seminar with the title Practical Aspect of Numerical Modeling for Rock Masses Using Rock Science Software. And uh, we will 
present here some of our investigation that should be uh, let's say analysis of the some aspect of the modeling from the engineering geological and the rock mechanic perspective connected with the case history structures and access road to the ash down set of petka near Skopje in macedonian that's me as igor introduced me already the presentation is uh, divided in several parts as you see here part one part three part part two and part three and after that we will have some conclusions i will not treat in detail say, all the content because through the presentation we will meet the general parts of the presentation first part is is with the title general information for our jam Petka and the approach in engineering geological and geotechnical modeling but uh, at the beginning i want to in, as an introduction to say that the using of rock science software at our faculty faculty of civil engineering and chair for geotechnic has a long tradition about 20 years from the beginning we bought uh, this software rock plane s wedge on wedge rock plane face etc and as you see in this pictures we keep this uh, first uh, let's say hard logs and the books from the uh, software in our shelves of libraries and a souvenir so it is interesting just to mention that we we somehow we grow together with the rock science company because they have tradition about 25 years something about this uh, structure this done i said that this is, it is a masterpiece of macedonian civil engineering because it is very beautiful structure you see it here at the picture uh, height of the dam is about 64 meters I would not read in details other parts, but the length of access road, very important part of the structure, is about 11 kilometers, uh, constructed in heavy geological environment. This is a part of this access road. And here we have some statistics about the slope heights, just to illustrate the, uh, let's say, uh, problem. You can see from here that a lot of uh, slopes have a height more than 10 meters some of them are over 30 meters the access road was prepared in two phases first one in a phase of construction of the dam but later there is some some measures for protection of the slopes of height so the analysis presented here are from the two phases just to illustrate what is what is done to establish some models we will prepare we will present here some data about the investigations Details in engineering geological mapping using known recommendation by International Association for Engineering Geology and International Society for Rock Mechanics. Drilling and variability tests. You see here a number of the drillings, about 1,700 meters drilling. Typical overall tests, unconfined compressive strength, Brazilian tensile strength, etc. We have there four investigation galleries, geophysical methods, refraction, reflection, microseismic tests, around flag jacks, geoelectrical methods, etc. And finally, large scale rock mechanics test as a flat jacks, the automated test, block deformation and shear test using different system. Uh, and all these data help us in the forming of some of the uh, models. Here in this diagram, we are presenting one of uh, our methodologies that we developed through the years together with colleagues Igor and uh, Jovan Papic. The idea is to connect the rating for geological complexity of some area with the number of necessary boreholes for different, let's say, height of the dams, 50 meters to up to 200 meters. So we have diagrams to prognose how much boreholes we need to establish, let's say, real, re reliable models. And here you can see the executed boreholes for the Arjdam Sveta Petka. Geological complexity is in a second category so-called, but we don't, we don't have enough time to, let's say, explain this methodology, maybe some other chance. In any case, it is well covered with investigation. Here in these pictures, we are presenting several interesting uh, dispositions of the large-scale testing. First one, a large-scale block test, system concrete rock mass, Concrete is here, at the bottom is rock mass, and shearing and vertical loading with the adequate system for testing. This is famous 
let's check with diameter width of two meters. I am not on a picture because I was the, in this case, photographer. This is Professor Naum Gapuski, our teacher and other colleagues. And this is uh, hydraulic flat jacks, but uh, now uh, 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 put in the investigation gallery around with the concrete and everything in, for system of testing. In the last picture is for the block shear testing. Two blocks are uh, tested and after that the block is overturned just to see the shearing zone of the rock mass. These are interesting tests. The details are given in these references together with colleague Ilios Kizotko here on the picture. Picture how we combine, let's say, parallel testing of starting and dynamical rock mass deformability for the flat jack. Flat jack is here, but around that we have two boreholes. We produce the seismic sources in some of the boreholes and with some measurement instruments, we measure the velocity of the longitudinal waves, which is necessary for later to establish some correlation. And similarly, on the block test, we have boreholes, borehole one, borehole two, we produce seismic waves in one place and we measure the distances, uh, we measure the travel of the seismic waves to measure the velocity of the seismic waves. So these are just to illustrate methodology. Beside that, we combine the other investigation with uh, seismic refraction and reflection test to measure the along some profiles the values of the seismic waves. This position is given here. We will not go into details. Of course, in all engineering geological or rock mechanic testing, we must test the intact parts of the rock. We have here some statistical analysis of the typical values of the uniaxial compressive strength, point load strength index, and establish correlation for this Sveta Petka Arjdam between them. This is necessary also for further classification of the rock masses. Also, for all boreholes, we prepare some statistical analysis of mean joint spacing and RQD parameter, which is necessary also for classification, just for, for illustration, some of the results here. Also, we do some here some specific tests shearing along joints, se several samples, and one interesting sample here. This is from the dumb body on the, on the radial joints. We take samples and you can see here in the middle the grouting mass which fill the radial joints and after that that is tested in this direct heck box with shearing and everyone who worked with that knows that the results uh, from this such kind of, this test should be used with the care because of some limitation of this equipment here if necessary later we can discuss with the in the audience, if by our, the, it is necessary to have some uh, care in the analysis of the results. Now, something out about the methodology of engineering and ge ge geological and geotechnical modeling. Here we are presenting the profile of Arjdam Svetapetka. Here are the main fault zone, which divides the left and right blocks of first order at the zone of the dam. I call them structural element one and two. And this is important to later to prepare the methodology of dividing in separate so-called quasi-homogeneous zones in the dumb area. When someone works with this, first criteria should be to find if there are some uh, fault zones, which are usually structural elements, which divide the field in the uh, main structural box. And after that, if we have some different lithological composition, that should be another criteria for separation. And after that, in the, each uh, box of first order, we can divide sub-zones using some parameters, let's say weathering, joint properties, water permeability, etc. And according to the measurement from boreholes or galleries, that, for example, that we have here four galleries, a lot of boreholes, etc., all the results should be used to assign some values for each quasi-homogeneous zone as a basis for the further analytical and numerical modeling, which means that uh, engineering geological sections and models should be basics for the further analysis. 
one example of the engineering geological model where we have established here you can see the correlation between known quality index according to Barton, Lee and Lund and rock mass rating according to Bieniawski. This correlation is valid only for the Arizona Seta Petka. The other, let's say, model is a model according to the deformability of the area. You see the fault zones are different zones left and right with interpolation with measurements of the data from the large-scale testing and geophysical parameters a lot of correlations are done between let's say loading modules with the uh, longitudinal waves loading unloading modules uh, waves dynamical models uh, waves of uh, seismic waves and finally loading and unloading modules and here in the legend you can see the uh, what colors means about, with the numbers of the values of the some, some of the parameters important for the further numerical analysis. Similar methodology, let's say it's used, it is used for the tunnel, diversion tunnel, and several subzones, zones A, B, C, D, etc. For all of them, values of the deformability, longitudinal base, uh, values of the Q value, RM, RM value, and with that we can go further in the definition of the support system, etc. Another models used for the stability an analysis in for the access road, let's say one of the slopes, very high one. You can see from here the scale, it is maybe more than 35 meters in total. Later we will discuss on the Eurocodes methodology how it is pre preparation of conceptual geological model for a step. After that, engineering geological model with some of the values of the parameter of the along the joints. And after that, some geotechnical model with, uh, let's say, designed a support system, which is later analyzed with software, this case, so rock science software. S similarly, for the foundation area of the dam, uh, when we put the joint sets on some profile, and we can divide here potential or stable key blocks, which, which are needed to be analyzed and later to be supported. And here on the right picture, you can see the beautiful aerial picture of the dam foundation. So, after this introductory part, something about the Arch Dam and Access Road. The second part is practical application of rock science software. Of course, we will not go in detail, but just to present some of the analyses. We use a lot of known methods. That is to solve stability using kinematical and limited equilibrium methods. Mainly plane failures and wedge failures are, are analyzed in the hard rock masses, in circular failures in the so called tau zones using the software rock plane S wedge or slide software. Portal sections of the tunnel, mainly S wedge software. Stability analysis of individual blocks along the diver diversion tunnel using unwedge software. Uh, rockfall analysis using rockfall software, older version of course, not new one, and analysis of zone of towns using uh, zone of faults in the tunnel using rock, rock support um, uh, software. Why analysis are necessary and why protection of the excavation zones and uh, slopes are necessary, we will see from several pictures. It is named, uh, the title of these slides are examples of analysis and photo gallery. In fact, you will see, you are seeing here a large, uh, one of the larger wedge failures. You see also the uh, wall, retaining wall is a little bit uh, destroyed. This is one of the case example. This is an outlet of the diversion tunnel. You can see the possibility of wedge failures. Let's say this part right hand and the from the roof you see combination of these joints in turn one which indicates the possible gravitational falling of the uh, unsupported uh, tunnel sections later we will see solutions for some of these cases typical uh, wedge failures along this intersection plane joint uh, uh, combination of joint plane one and two and a wedge with a smaller dimension the other picture is large wedge uh, instability 
along the uh, combination joint plan one and two, and this is intersection plan, typical, let's say, examples of the wedge failures. The other picture is typical possibility of so-called plane failure. You see these long joints, already some of the blocks, smaller one, but fallen, one plane, the other one, typical case as I explained for the a large planner possibility of planner failure. And this is example of so-called tau zone, so in fact blocks of the soil mass, which is uh, susceptible to the rotational movement of the blocks. And after that, after this photo gallery, just several slides with the uh, using of the sum of the software, let's say here slide, software slide, to analyze the stability of circular failures with some input parameters, some loading combination, just to illustrate the possibility of this software. Using of the rock plane software to analyze plane failure along some of the foliation plans, but combined with tension joints, some combination with the water in, uh, infiltration, seismic loads, etc. And finally, definition of factor of safety and probability of uh, failure, we will see on the other pictures. Here it is a presentation of the two diagrams, one known presentation of so-called stereographic net, joint sets and intersection of the joint planes which form the wedge. And on the right, right side, it is a diagram of probability of failure. We can see from here the mid middle factor of safety is uh, relatively high, about two and a half. And someone will say that it is good, it is stable, but this you are seeing here that there is some uh, part of the diagram with the values be below the one, which means that it is some probability of failure. In this case, 3.2%. This is an example for SVETCH software. One example of the analysis of the possibility of failures from the roof of the uh, tunnel and some smaller blocks on the side. Maybe you remember the picture from the outlet. I put, I give their indication of such kind of possibility of failures. And also, of course, everyone who uses this Sunway software knows the, that it gives the values of the uh, weight of the uh, wedges and the factor of safety without or with supporting measures. Very useful software when we know the, let's say, when we know the elements, deep amount of the main joint sets and orientation of the tunnel axis. It is relatively easy to calculate the factor of the safety of potentially unstable blocks for all combination from the roof, from the sides, etc. And also here we are presenting one of the uh, wedges at the portal section of the diverser tunnel with high probability of failures. In fact, it is uh, some kind of back analysis for some of the wedges that already f uh, fall from the excavation. I present the, such kind of uh, wedges on the, one of the earlier pictures. Why I, uh, I'm presenting such kind of the diagram, we will see later in the presentation how to we are prepare some methodology, how to define which uh, value of probability of failure can be acceptable for some engineering problems. Also here, one of the our analyses during the uh, uh, preparation of the supporting measures for the access road. The, the, here are the two sections here and here of the access road. Possibility if some block fall from the upper sections and the trajectory of its uh, uh, movement advance up to the zone of the foundation of the dam. So that was the reason and indication that the protection of the slopes it is necessary to avoid some problems with the uh, safety of the people's which works and the equipment installed there. Typical analysis with the rock fault software. And finally, just for an illustration, in the tunnel we have one larger fault zone and for this zone, together with the concrete protection, the classification zone is analyzed and the system for support of supporting. Very simple uh, using of this uh, rock support program, but software, but very useful also to 
see possibility of the development of these plastification zones. As I mentioned earlier, it is obviously that uh, the sun protection was necessary for on the slopes, and we somehow we used this program of the working according to Hack and Bray from 1997. There is here the project, the uh, program of working is uh, suggested here. We do this way because it was existing slopes, some stability ass assessments, as we uh, see earlier. For if the slopes are unstable, we are going further and further. And finally, definition of risk of failure and possibilities for high risk of failure to design stabilization system to achieve the required factor of safety or to accept some possibility of failure and to install monitoring system to provide warning of deterioration stability condition. Somehow, uh, later you will see in presentation, we combine these two possibilities to prepare some diagrams. Rocks, uh, in a frame of the uh, design, several types of uh, protection types are analyzed. Let's say first one was reinforced rock shed, but later it was not applied because it is analyzed only in the preliminary design phases. So project protection type, it was reinforced rough structure. It is not analyzed in the detailed design, but only in the preliminary. And we applied in the later, this mainly this uh, soil protection types, typical rock, rock bolt system combined with wire mesh and shoot grid, chain link, and finally treatment of those sections. So in the next slides, we will see some of the solutions, not in so much detail, but just to illustrate one detail of the uh, soil protection type three. Uh, uh, rock bolts with different length, depending on the uh, profile, from three to eight meters, we apply them and should create combined with some wire mesh. For towel section, Old gabions were installed, but we add additional one, some barriers, and we put here also the uh, one uh, uh, one shoot crit layer. From the beginning, we were afraid if it worked, but it happens that it works very well in the towels uh, area. <clears throat> some of our articles we present for all these types, some let's say diagrams to pro to make a fast prognosis of the price for protection in euros with some area of protection and we can very easy to calculate according to the prices that were valid during the, that time how much it would be the cost for the protection only one case and one illustration and now several pictures of protection you see now in the face of the working this is a area of the dam foundations you see here the rock mass very carefully blasted with this controlled blasting. You see the boreholes. <coughs> and the uh, upper section is a uh, protection with the shoot grid rock bolts. You can see here some drain hole pipes, etc. Typical protection system for the rock well, for hard rock masses. It comes out that it is very useful in this case. It is also very interesting photograph. Photograph. This is a foundation zone of the dam. Uh, in entrance into Grauten Gallery. You, you can see here the vertical shelf, hair shaft during the blasting of the slopes. It was protected with rubbers to protect, let's say, uh, let's say some of the rock pieces which during the blasting to put, to hit the gallery and to <coughs> have some kind of protection. And you can see how, uh, very, how close was the blasting uh, compared with the vertical shaft very careful work produce good results this is uh, as i explained earlier a protection of the towel section you see the typical wire mesh should create first layer and after the second one it was applied combination with some gabions other one as i said earlier it works fine in this material from the beginning we were afraid about the effective effectiveness of this measure now several typical pictures from the slopes also rock type three you see the way of working 
typical for rock mechanic problems. Protection of the outlet of the tunnel. You remember these uh, wedges, which were analyzed that should fall. In fact, now it is protected with the, this measure, con reinforced con concrete. And from this picture, you see that uh, the working condition was very heavy, but we are very satisfied how it works and the it was let's say some source to learn something from this uh, uh, case history we learned several lessons and we can give now several recommendations of course for example how to combine with the values of safety factors and probability of failure together with the colleague Sigor and uh, Natasha Nedelkoska for in one of the symposiums we prepare such kind of the uh, diagrams and divide, divide several areas the legend is uh, this is not acceptable zone combination of factor of safety and probability of failure this is uh, broadly acceptable for typical engineering structure which means we recommend higher values than two of factor of safety and lower values of three percent of probability of failures if someone works with the risks he, uh, maybe you know the uh, methodology of uh, our a methodology acceptable level of risks if we put on the uh, excess is number of possible fatalities and uh, on epsilon max is probability of failure similarly we divide four zones broad, from broadly acceptable to not acceptable conditions and here similar diagram with potential economical losses if some event of incidents happened in euros combined with the probability of failure of course, these diagrams can be discussed, but somehow they can lead us what is acceptable, what is not acceptable, and which measures should be applied later. How to combine economical effect with the with this previous slide? For one of the wedges, this is analysis, wedges analyzed for the axis of Sveta Petka. We prepare diagrams if we invest in protection with some value of money it happens that as or as much money we invest we have a higher factor of safety from the limit uh, condition if we don't apply nothing to the satisfactory value of 1.7 and the other part is a decreasing of the probability of, of failure and let's say very close to the uh, probability of failure of zero if we invest something combined with the value of factor of safety about 1.4 this can be let's say satisfactory investment in this for this wedge not for all of them which means that for all case you should prepare similar analogies how much you should invest to uh, came to the satisfactory value of probability of failures and satisfactory value of the factor of safety and similar diagram i will not discuss this formula it indicates this summation effect of the applied measures for the uh, protection simple we simple uh, formula uh, when we use the safety factor obtained with applied measure uh, and combined with the initial safety factor we can see the let's say uh, effect from applied measures the other another diagram now in the numerical modeling especially in the rogue masses it is very important to uh, find methodology for parameter uh, extrapolation here we have one citation of from the Brady and brown that it is very heavy to find a way for the jointed rock mass how to find equivalent uh, continuous satisfactory approach to see what uh, level of the investigation area should, it is enough to to let's say put the representative values in the numerical model this diagram let's say indicates that unconfined compression strength for one of the rock masses from this uh, article of Kundal et al from 2008 from uh, you see uh, more than 300 megapascals with a uh, uh, larger scale up to 10 meters it went to the lower part of the about 40 let's say megapascals 
problem in the extrapolation is that the maximum values for the large scale testing is up to two meters, as I as I explained to you in in one of the pictures. Large scale flat jack testing is two meter in diameters, but you see the parameters which are necessary are for a larger area. But this it can be overcome if we use geophysical tests combined with the static testing, because geophysical tests are not limited in the area that we can uh, investigate. So this is one slide which leads us to the methodology which we explained together with Igor in one of the Europe symposiums in 2018. We prepared one diagram. Of course, geological investigation are necessary for all area of interaction. We classify all the area of interaction with a non-rock mass classification system, preparing of geophysical seismic tests, etc., etc. And finally, we form direct and indirect regression models between rock mass quality, static modules, dynamic deformability parameters, etc. And with this, we can let's say extrapolate parameters from the smaller areas to the larger one, forming with different engineering geological models. Uh, and uh, we do a parameter extrapolation for all area of interaction. So this is a way how to achieve this for larger values, but also for the uh, all, whole area of some structure. We are closing to the end. Uh, during the last period, we are preparing, we do some efforts to to get closer to the Eurocode 7 from the rock mechanic perfect perspective. And I find this in bond at all presentation very soon. One uh, approach for the definition of models. You see level one is geological simple model, level two engineering geological model, three, etc., to the final geotechnical design model, which is in fact calculation model to analyze some parameters necessary to solve some geotechnical problem. Everyone who works something in Eurocode 7 knows that, in fact, this is uh, till now in, separated in two parts. The geotechnical design model is part of Eurocode 7 part 1, and ground model, it is uh, now suggested in the new uh, versions. So this, uh, let's say, uh, hierarchy modeling, it is uh, su uh, suggested for everyone who works in modeling, starting from geological model to the final calculation, final, not in this final, but for calculation model to establish some, let's say, protection systems. And now, according to our, let's say, working, our uh, knowledge and everything, we, uh, I think that it was necessary to put it in this presentation, several questions. Let's say during the work on this presentation, I find one question by our colleague Zoran Berisavlevich from Serbia. It is on ResearchGate.net, and he asked if uh, Heck and Diedrich rock mass modules is unloading modules. We will see why this is important, because modules of the formation is a typical parameter used in all kinds of analysis. And he put these questions there. There is not a, no lot of answers on this till now. Also, critical parameter in, in Heck and Brown empirical failure criteria is disturbance coefficient. How to apply that? And uh, also, Heck Brown empirical criterion, as you know, it has several possibilities to use the general model for slopes or for tunnels. So the question is when and what to use. First question by Beris Savljevich. If someone, let's say, use unloading modules, our case, the correlation for Sveta Petka done indicates the deformation modules or rock mass modules in the uh, Heck Brown uh, criteria. Somehow it is twice lower than the unloading modules. So you can imagine what can happen if someone use unloading modules instead of this you will get a larger deformation, of course. So this is necessary to separate this and to solve these questions. About the disturbance coefficient, a lot of improvements on the new rock science softwares. It gives uh, uh, suggestions how to apply 
the disturbance coefficient d from 0 0.7 for mechanical excavation for some slope and to what depth linearly it should be decreased to the level of the let's say zero this is this can be same rock mass let's say some limestone but these zones you have a completely different shear sand or deformability parameters so this is useful very useful for younger researchers to be careful not to work for the whole mass area with let's say this coefficient of disturbance Uh, in the rock mechanics, usually the several questions are asked, but when you model something, the uh, main question is when to prepare continuum model approach or discontinuum model approach. So here I present two pictures from the first one. The, this is uh, from the, this article, Lama et al. in Europe 2014. And this uh, indicates that this is also a known, let's say, suggestion by Heck and Brown when to apply Heck and Brown criteria. And you can see from here that uh, for the rocks with the uh, low, lower quality, we can use continuum model approach, but from Q 0 0.1 to Q to 100, here it is a region for this continuum approach. And after that, for the between 200 and 1000, we can again use continuum approach. So this is suggestion when not to apply all the time continuum approach, sometimes you need to apply the discontinuum approach in modeling. Several of uh, two, uh, uh, two pictures, one when we, let's say, analyze the gravity dumps found there on the uh, rock masses with the joint sets, which has a low value of the uh, intact part. Sec this is continuum modeling approach can be used. This is some intermediate case. And the other one is discontinuum model approach because the value of the uh, uh, block size, it is very close to the dimension, the typical dimensions of the foundation area. So here you should apply some discontinuum model approach to see possibility, let's say, to have failure along these intersections. Similar for the slopes. When we have small rock blocks, we can use continuum model approaches, let's say slide program, or here when we have typical bedding plants and large blocks, some foundation of the slope or the same slope, maybe here you will use rock plane analysis. So that is some recommendation how to use, to use this effect of relation between the inter rock block parts combined with the, some of the dimension of the structure uh white of the foundation or some other or the height one of the main questions in rock mechanics is also how to incorporate parameter variations and scale effect when we have a shearing along joints in the first presentation of our uh, costs uh, it is mentioned that uh, it is important so here we are presenting one case of the analysis for the setup at kaban minimum maximum values of the known uh, ER GRC coefficient at the scale of the uh, intact part to the uh, rock mass scale and how the variations are possible you can see let's say this is middle case but the values of value, uh, angle of internal friction can went from the 38 degrees to be decreased to 32 so the question is what to use in analysis of course and here on the right side, it is known Barton diagram, a com combination of the amplitude of the asperities of the joints, and also here, and length of the profile, how to, to let's say, overcome this problem with the scale effect for the large and joints, which are indication for some of the wedge or the plane failures. And some of the last slides, this is our presentation of the uh, audit area for intact rock samples that we tested on Sveta Petka done. Loaded area from concrete blo blocks, it is to, uh, 0 0.64 meters. For flat jack, 3.14 uh, meters square. And real scale loaded of the dam scale is these numbers, more than to 150,000 uh, meter cubics, which indicates the modulus of deformation can vary from the for the intact part from the 4,000 
but the real scale indicates that it should be about 5,000. So it is very visible not to use these uh, values. We must use some of these values for analysis. And some conclusions to the end. It is not a lot of sentences, but I will read some of them. It is obvious from this that successful geotechnical and numerical modeling in rock masses is possible if the uh, input parameters are uh, defined in a re reliable manner and very close to the reality, correct, and as much possible close to the real state and proper properties of the rock masses. Key problem is, as we see, extrapolation of the parameters from the zone of testing to the whole area of, in of interest for interaction analysis of the system rock mass artificial structures. It is obvious that we must for several types of models, from concepts, conceptual, to engineering geological, to some geotechnical and calculation model, and we must choose uh, adequate continuum or discontinuous model approach depending on the rock mass characteristic. And these three, first three, let's say, conclusions are not possible if we don't cooperate between us and exchange, if we don't exchange experiences and knowledge with different purpose, persons and scientific branches. Of course, all case histories, especially successful case histories, are very are welcomed and we must learn from them. And as you see from here, from this sketch, from this picture, we must look on the problem from several perspectives just to see what is, let's say, a real problem, not to have W or M. It is some, both of them are correct, but we must look on the problem for several perspectives. And this is, I think, very also important. Very close to the end, I find this sentence from Diedrich uh, report in the Rock Science International Conference, the evolution of geotechnic, 25 years of years of innovation. Last year it was uh, held it, and he said that it is necessary to apply this approach. Never turn off your brain when you turn on your computer, nor when someone else turns their computer on for you, which means it is very clear what it means. So, because as I say, we are very close to the end, questions can follow after the next slide, which is uh, uh, thank for your you all, for all of you for your kind attention with a welcome note to our fifth symposium of our association. It will be held in Ohrid from 23 to 25 of June. So all of you are welcome to exchange there also some experiences. So this is the end. I don't know now who will follow the question if there are some or how to yeah. proceed with that. Okay, thank you, Professor. Uh, thank you for the nice presentation. Uh, now we have some time for uh, questions from the audience. So uh, the pool is open and you can share your uh, question with us. Please let me read it. It's just one remark from the audience regarding the diagrams. Uh, either uh, he or she is uh, advising uh, using the reliability index instead of probability of failure. Uh, which is an, another indicative parameter. Uh, thank you for your comment. Yes, yes. In fact, we in some other analysis, we use this also as a, one of the indicators of the, let's say, slope safety. And uh, it, it is uh, in the output of the SVETCH, you can find the values of the reliability index. So it is a good to combine that also with the probability of error or, or factor of safety. It is some recommendation of, let's say, Duncan and some other authors, where using this reliability index, we can see in what uh, area we are, on a safe area or, let's say, unsafe area. So this is a good question, and all of us, we should combine this parameter together with the safety factor of probability of error. Uh, one other question. Uh, how do you determine the probability of failure? Uh, the, would you like to answer it or? I can answer uh, uh, in uh, uh, software, 
it is a combination of the parameter which you can use the variation of the parameters to some level let's say cohesion angle of friction also geometric condition can be let's say used from one to another value and combining the analysis with simulation usually monte carlo method it is included in the software and let's say about 1000 analyses are done with a lot of combination of parameters it works automatically so let's say if you have cases of combination uh, with the values of factor of safety lower than one if we have 10 combination divided with 1000 analysis cases from here you can calculate the uh, probability of error in fact it is incorporated in the software so very easy in probabilistic uh, way of analysis in the software you can calculate this because usually in rock science software you have deterministic analysis with only one values of the parameters or probabilistic one with the variation of parameters what you will use in a variation it is your choice let's say you should use the parameters which are, which affects more on the of, uh, values of the for in this case factor of safety Thank you, Professor. Uh, specifically, the rock science software suite includes three different methods for simulating your samples. Eh? Uh, one of them is the traditional Monte Carlo method. The other one is the Latin hypercube, oh, which Latin works cube, yeah. in a more uh, uh, rigorous way, uh, in, in a more simpler way, I'm sorry. Uh, however, it reaches the same amount of stability after a number of iterations. It's some matter of just defining the size of your sample size sample set and uh, running a preliminary analysis to see if these two approaches converge and the latter one is introduced recently is the response surface method uh, for simulating a probability set uh, which is considered to be more efficient uh, you have other options uh, when we're considering we uh, the probability of failure it's the uh, number of cases which yield factor of safety uh, less than one compared to your uh, complete set of analysis using a, a randomly distributed set of parameters in your simulation uh, as professor Yovanovsky clearly addressed but uh, you have also uh, the chance of just quantifying other thresholds within your uncertainty simulation uh, let's say you have to just directly uh, pick out the number of analysis which uh, yield factor of safety is less than 1.2 let's say so if you have a different uh, risk-based threshold that you want to assess then it should not it's not necessarily one uh, it can be something else that you choose so I hope this answers your question. Uh, another comment uh, from Professor Popic. Uh, can there be other recommendations regarding Euro Code 7 and rock mechanics, rock engineering? So, who uh, wants to hear more about Euro Code 7? Uh, fortunately, uh, in your version, in newer versions of the Rock Science, also analysis of Euro Code 7 are incorporated. Uh, for the audience, I, will, I can say that the International Society for Rock Mechanics has a special group for development of the Eurocode 7 in rock mechanics. It, uh, the mandate is finished now of this group and they work as a helpful part in the internet, in the, together with the groups from the International Society for uh, Soil Mechanics and Geotechnical Engineering. We don't know what happens with the final let's say suggestion bit because it was a very a lot of open questions especially in a definition of necessary investigation works partial factors which should be used for rock masses how to use the partial factors for the um, uh, let's say protection barriers from the rock falls a lot of open questions now we don't know final let's say output because the, the second version of Eurocode 7 it was planned to be prepared till the end of 2021, but the, the process is not finished. So we will see when the, the second version will come out and to see what happens with the support from International Society for Rock Mechanics. So it is very heavy part, 
not well defined in Eurocode 7. Mostly Eurocode 7 is connected with the problems for soil mechanics. All of us waiting what should be suggested in the new versions, and I hope that it would be helpful. Anyhow, using the partial factors which are typical for soil mechanics, some of our analysis indicates that it can help. It can help to use the same approach, let's say, for cohesion, for angle internal friction. But the problem is, in, in general, with the nonlinear uh, dependence between normal and shear stresses, usually used in rock mechanics. We will see, but it is interesting area for the younger researchers. And as I mentioned, everyone who works with rock science in the slide, uh, in the rock plane and the S wedge, it is already incorporated. And I think also in unwedge, it is possible to uh, to use approach from Eurocode 7. Open area for further investigation. Thank you, Professor. Uh, one other question. Uh, please be noted that this session has been recorded and whole footage will be broadcasted via Rock Sciences YouTube channel uh, several days or weeks uh, after today. So you will be able to receive the details and track the valuable content that Professor Iwanowski and Peshevsky have delivered today to browse in detail regarding their works and papers. Uh, one last question maybe uh, before we leave and close the session. For a passive anchor to stabilize rock slope, is there a standard depth or does it depend on the type of rock? Uh, there is a no standard depth. We should look to find, let's say, critical plans which are kinematically, which control the kinematically possibility of the failure. And if we know their position in the slope, we should vent below them. So there is no standard. We must find the geometrical conditions of the main joints in a combination with the elements of the slopes. That is the criteria. So no one can say that here we will use, let's say, three meters, here six, here nine or 20. It depends from case to case. So here it is very helpful to have a detailed engineering geological mapping everywhere every time when it is possible to analyze open outcrops. Now it is a little bit easier with drone technologies and everything to reach the places which are almost impossible to vent by walking, let's say. So you must find the critical joint planes to see the possible kinematical modes of failure. And after that, you will see where you will apply, let's say, three meters, where six, where nine. There is no... Uh, uh, a universal solution, let's say, for the depth. In fact, this is interesting in rock mechanics. You, you never know what should happen. <laughs> uh, one other comment from our side to support your idea is just uh, my favorite word, uh, monitoring. So uh, before, just uh, in case you're not uh, after applying a single bolt or a soil nail, a, a nail to stabilize a rock slope, uh, you can never be sure of the performance. So, uh, to, to be fully sure, uh, we would always recommend uh, testing out and verifying the real site performance uh, of that conceptual uh, calculation, if applicable. Uh, monitoring is a very important and necessary phase. In fact, everything before that, it is some kind of prognosis starting from first models and to the solution if it did did not monitor the system it can happen during the time to have some problems so monitoring in the rock masses it is also a little bit heavier but uh, it can be done now it is uh, it can we can use this uh method i'm asking macedonian write the word igor will tell the Methods for uh, remote, remote sensing. Remote sensing. Yeah. Some of the remote sensing methods can be useful. Uh, also, some uh, in some of the rock masses, especially for the down foundation, extensor methods are very useful. And typical uh, inclinometers are not every time. Maybe in the 
some weather trucks it can be useful to install uh, inclinometers so just to underline again that real monitoring system in a real time and real scale it is a final let's say checking of all our solutions how to how and when to apply it is a problem of the special design for from case to case Thank you all. Uh, as far as I can track, there are no other questions remaining. And I would like to respect dear participants, panelists' time uh, to enjoy their time uh, during the rest of the day. So I'm leaving the stage to Professor Pashevsky and Yovanovsky uh, for uh, closing the session. Uh, from Geodesic and Rock Science sites, uh, have a nice day. Uh, have a great day. Okay, maybe you, first I yes, can say something. Igor will be the last one. Thank you again in uh, my name and name of the Macedonian Association for Geotechnic and also the Faculty of Civil Engineering about this chance to to present some of the our results and to 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 the wider audience to uh, recommend the rock science product because they are very easy to use but it is very visible that they are produced by the person which knows the things uh, in details so i want to thank all of you again about the to be part of this session and i hope that uh, in the future we will meet each other directly to exchange some ideas let's say we have some analysis of your uh, case of the wedge how to prepare one shear envelope but that should be for some other discussion how to solve this problem with very simple, not even simple, but simple with a question mark, simple way. So thank you again in my name. Yes, uh, thank to the organizer and to the uh, attendees of this uh, webinar. And I hope that uh, with the material that was presented by the professor, some of, uh, of the audience will motivate themselves to try some of the analysis. We have done, let's say, uh, work on the risk uh, assessment side, on, on the probabilistic models, and it is, it is becoming a standard, we can easily say, into the geotechnical engineering to work with, with these reliability indexes and probability of failures. So we are motivating, especially the younger uh, audience, to try and test this uh, approaches for the analysis for the design and of course they can do it with uh, different uh, tools that are available and as we can see from the first versions of rock science software that we have at the faculty to the last ones now there is a big uh, advancement in this regard in the development of the softwares and i can say freely that we are especially eager to see now the the announced version of the uh, rockfall program in 3d because we we have the need of, of something sophisticated like this uh, especially here in macedonia because we have a lot of problems with uh, rock falls so we will be expecting it soon and, and try to to make the best out of it so thank you everybody also from my side and see you in uh, next occasion thank you professors thank you dear attendees uh, thank you all uh, with your permission, I'm ending the session. Have a nice day.